Here in the green rolling hills of the Scottish lowlands, they've been producing Glen Kinchy malt whiskey for over 160 years. Scotland's cold, wet climate suits the growing of barley, and they say the local water is vital to the taste of the finished product. Inside these vats, the fermentation is taking place, which will eventually produce the star product, the single malt, so-called because it's from a single distillation process. The rest is sold for the mass market blended whiskies. But it's the malt, aged in wooden barrels, that demands the high prices and is the connoisseur's ultimate prize. As uh, the last 25 years have gone past, uh, disposable income has risen across uh, the world really and there's been a move away from blended whiskies to uh, more expensive blended whiskies, the, the, more, the, the better quality ones and then a move again from that to single malt whiskies which has been good news for us obviously as an industry. The casks will sit for 10 years until the flavour is mature. Even with modern technology you can't hurry a malt. The spirit is distilled twice in the traditional copper stills. In the old days, the distillery would have employed specialized stillmen and mashmen. Glen Kinchy is now owned by the drinks giant United Distillers and Vintners. And with the worldwide trend to cut staff numbers, Glen Kinchy employs just eight general operators who do everything. Some of Scotland's more than 100 distilleries are even single man operation. At the distillery shop, a bottle of 10-year-old single malt Glen Kinchy sells for around 40 U.S. dollars. Despite the high price, there's been tremendous growth in the last five years. And whiskey marketers are adding new ranges and limited additions to their malts. Single malt's on something of a roll at the moment. Sales are increasing at 20% each year, and worldwide sales last year were more than $200 million. But in New York City, the single malt popularity has rolled over into a phenomenon. Kilts in Manhattan are as rare as a hot, dry day in Scotland. But in fact, Scottish malts have taken a curious route to midtown Manhattan, where Japanese bar owner Hivaiwa Kawichi has assembled an extensive collection. Here in his discreet second floor bar called the Hole in One, Drinkers can throw back a single shot of single malt for 980 US dollars. Koichi shares his passion for Scotch whiskey with his customers, mainly Japanese businessmen traveling through or working in New York. He serves the Scotch in a traditionally Japanese environment, but the prices, ranging from 14 to nearly $1,000, are distinctly modern. Koichi's love of Scotch is shared by millions around the world. Distillers sell in excess of three billion U.S. dollars worth of whiskey each year. He boasts his well-stocked bar is recognized as one of the best collections of fine single malts in the world. In my bar, Scotch whiskey about 280 bottles. The star is the rare Bomar 40, but not everyone is willing to pay nearly a thousand dollars for a mouthful. Uh, I can pay 100 or 200, I think, but 1,000 is too expensive for me. The bar does a steady business, but the outrageously expensive malts only come out on special occasions. As profits march remorselessly on, distillers invest in more automation. Ironically, there are fewer jobs for Scottish people. Glenmorangie is the most popular single malt in Scotland and the number three in the world. Here, just outside Edinburgh, they bottle their own single malts and pack up blended whiskey for the big supermarkets. It's a state-of-the-art $3 million bottling plant, employing 200 people. But the trend toward automation takes its toll on jobs, and there's a constant push from the big customers to keep costs down. Increasingly, um, with the mergers between supermarkets and, and these big players, um, they're able to, to put a, a fair bit of pressure on us to, to reduce costs and, uh, and more have their say in how we do business. The vast amount of whiskey sold are the blended brands that everyone recognizes. Single malts are only 5% of total whiskey sales. Marketers are falling over themselves to capture this niche market. I think that people generally are moving to buying 
premium items of, of whatever they're buying, um, and particularly so in drink. If, if they drink lager, they're drinking premium lager. People tend to drink less, but drink better. They're more concerned about their health. They're more concerned about their waistline. So therefore, rather than having several cheaper drinks, they will have one or two, but really spoil themselves and buy something which has a bit more complexity about it, a bit more richness in the flavor. In an Edinburgh garage amidst the bicycles and grimy bric-a-brac, Philip Hills is making whiskey. He's single-handedly making a single malt, but it can't be sold. It can't even be sampled. The whiskey writer has the only private license to distill in Scotland, but the still is purely for show and explaining the various chemical processes at work in making whiskey. Hills takes much of the credit for widening access to single malts. His book, Appreciating Whiskey, is considered a Bible for whiskey buffs. Whiskey became popular outside Scotland in the later 19th century, and it became popular mainly among the English middle classes, who by and large didn't know good drink from bad. So the dis distillers were, like the gin producers, were able to sell them rubbish, provided it had sufficient social status that they would drink it. Hill doesn't mind that drinkers in New York have more money than sense when it comes to rare single malts. He's not surprised that they're willing to pay through the nose. There are lots of people who really don't care what they pay because they are so rich. And they've got the idea that the more expensive a malt it is, the better it is. This is not necessarily the case. They're quite often mistaken in this. Visitors from Finland poking around the Glenkinchy distillery. Increasingly, drinkers from around the world are using the labels on their bottles as a roadmap to find where their favorite malt is made. But is it the rich Scottish heritage or the scotch that lures the tourist? Statistics show that whiskey alone accounts for more than a million visitors a year to Scotland. It's the most international of national drinks. The French drink more whiskey than cognac, and whiskey sales in Greece outstrip Ouzo. Those trying to build on the cachet of single malt throughout the world hope that Scotland's guests will slip a dram in their luggage along with their holiday memories. <laughs>